Praise the Lord, saints of God. Glory be to God. Blessed be the God and Father of our precious Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ the righteous, the one that has saved us, the one that has redeemed us, the one that has delivered us, the one that has healed us, the one who is keeping us, favoring us, increasing us more and more, us and our children in 2024. Oh, we celebrate, oh, his presence tonight. Oh, we celebrate his love tonight, his faithfulness tonight. Oh, we celebrate his word tonight. Oh, glory to God. We celebrate Jesus tonight the one who is committed to never leave us, to never forsake us, to be with us even until the end, the one who has promised to keep us, the one who has promised to preserve us, the one who has promised to help us. Oh, we celebrate you tonight, Lord Jesus, and we thank you for your love and for your faithfulness to us. Faithful is our God. Oh, you're faithful. You're faithful. You're faithful. You're faithful to us. Hallelujah. Glory be to God. Well, praise the Lord, saints of God. I'm so excited that you tuned in to our Word Encounter Hour. This is the setting that God has ordained for us to have an encounter with Him through His Word for a change of story. Oh, glory be to God. You in the right place at the right time to receive the right thing from your heavenly father. Glory to God. You couldn't have been in a better place than the place you are right now. This is the place that God has appointed for you. Amen. To have an encounter with him through his word for a change of story. Jesus, oh, glory to God, is present tonight. And the Bible tells us when the Lord is present in 1 John 3, verse 8, he's manifested to destroy all the works of the devil. He's present tonight to destroy fear, worry, depression, anxiety. He's present tonight to destroy sickness, pain, disease. He's present tonight to destroy poverty, lack, and insufficiency. He's present tonight to destroy all the workings of the devil. Oh, glory to God. You may be saying, well, how you know he's present? Well, we let the word inform us, not how we feel, what we're going through. We let the word describe to us the activities of God. Hallelujah. Glory to God. And the Bible says in Matthew chapter 18, verse 20, where two or more are gathered together in his name, there he is, the one who saves, delivers, heals, and set free. There he is in the midst of us. Jesus, the King of kings and the Lord of lords is in our midst on tonight. Oh, glory to God. And the Bible tells us Amen, what he's in the midst of us to do, and that's destroy, dismantle, uproot, and forcefully remove every working of the devil from your life. Amen. Glory be to God. Oh, I feel that anointing, that yoke-destroying, burden-removing power of the Lord. It's present tonight. It's present. Oh, I said it's present. Whew, glory. Ooh, it's getting stronger and stronger. Amen. Whenever I feel that anointing, I know the Lord is ready to do something. Amen. He's ready to heal, deliver, and set people free. We've been fasting and praying all day today. On Tuesdays, the ministry engaged the Lord through fasting and prayer. Amen. And we're believing God according to Isaiah 58. Amen. Verse 6 through 14. For deliverance from all satanic oppression and affliction. We believe in God, amen, for divine instruction and guidance. We believe in God for the salvation, the deliverance from all those who we've been praying for. We believe in God for speedy responses to our prayers. We believe in God for increase 
enlargement, expansion, and growth, and greatness. Oh, it's manifesting tonight. I said it's manifesting tonight. Whew. Oh, glory be to God. Glory be to God. Wow. Amen. Oh, I feel his presence. It's like somebody got behind me and put a, a cloak on me. Amen. It's, it's like an, a clothing, a mantle came up on me tonight to minister deliverance and breakthrough to the people of God. Oh, glory be to God. Turn your Bibles, if you would, to Isaiah chapter 9. Amen. Glory to God. And let's look at verse 8. Isaiah chapter 9, verse 8. Amen. The Bible says, the Lord sent a word unto Jacob. Amen. He sent a word. He sent a word. He sent a word unto Jacob. And look at the effects of this word that he sent. The Bible says, this word that he sent unto Jacob. Amen. It lit up. It lit up, it lit up all Israel. I'm telling you this word that the Lord sent us tonight, whew, it's going to light you up. Oh, glory to God. I said it's going to light you up. Woo, it's going to light you up with his presence. It's going to light you up with his glory. It's going to light you up with his power. And everything that's attached to you, amen, that's unlike him, is going to leave you. You ain't even going to have to pray. Amen. It's just going to, the light going to get rid of it. Just like when you walk in your house and cut the light on, what's the first thing to leave? Darkness. Oh, glory to God. I'm telling you, this word going to light you up and anything that represents, resemble darkness is going to leave. Whew, glory to God. Oh, that's a word right there. Amen. See, we need to put emphasis and value on the word of God. Amen. Glory to God. We got to see the importance and value of the word. We can no longer try to solve our issues and concerns and challenges apart from the word. Amen. Trying to solve your problems without the word is, 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 is the enemy. He fattening you up for the slaughter. Amen. You can never solve your problems without the word. Amen. Glory to God. You got to value the word as much as you do your food you eat. Just as it takes food to survive and live, so it takes the word. Amen. Glory to God to live. Jesus said in Matthew 4 verse 4, men should not live by bread alone, but by every word that comes out of the mouth of God. You know how Job solved his problems? Amen. Let's look at how he solved his problems. Look there with me to Job. Job 23. Job 23. He had financial problems, health problems, family problems, friend problems. Amen. He had them on every side. And let's look at how he, does, how he solved them all. Oh, glory to God. Notice what he said in Job 23. Look at verse 12. Job 23, verse 12. He said, neither have I gone back from the commandments of your lips. I have esteemed the words of your mouth more than my necessary food. Mm. Glory to God. See, he said he put the word Above everything else, he prioritized the word. He esteemed the word. He valued the word. He appreciated the word more than anything else. Amen. Glory to God. He let Jesus have the final say. Amen. Glory to God. And so I'm just amazed tonight at how the Lord is going to put emphasis. Amen. And, and value on his love to see you free, delivered, healed, whole, well. Whew, glory to God. Amen. Glory to God. Well, amen. We're so excited at what the Lord is doing at the ministry. Go to the Facebook page. You can see all the things that the Lord is doing 
amen, at the ministry. Join us in prayer, amen, believe in God with us, amen, for the fulfillment of every prophetic agenda that he's spoken of us, amen. He said at the beginning of this year, amen, that he wants to increase us more and more in 2024, according to Psalms 115, verse 14, amen. Glory to God. And see, in order for him to increase us, he has to have our cooperation and participation. And the first way that we cooperate with him is in three areas. Number one, in what we say. Amen. Glory to God. Number two, in what we think. Amen. Glory to God. And number three, in what we expect. Mm, the Bible says in Proverbs 23, verse 18, surely there is an end and thine expectation shall not be cut off. Amen. Glory to God. So we got to say the same thing, think the same thing and expect the same thing. And we're going to partake of the same thing. <laughs> Glory be to God. Amen. Praise the Lord. Also, I want to appreciate all of our partners, all of our friends, Amen, that have partnered with us. Amen, in this mission. Amen, in the in the assignment that the Lord has given to us. We want to appreciate all of our members, ministers, and leaders. Amen, glory to God. We are partners together in this endeavor. Amen, glory to God. The Lord uh, had me to pray for our partners and, and friends and members, ministers, and leaders today. And I was praying according to Psalms 118, amen, verse 7. The Bible says in Psalms 118, verse 7, the Lord is on my side and he takes part with me and he is amongst those who help me. Mm. Glory be to God. That's how I know the enemy ain't going to defeat you, overcome you. Glory to God, because the Lord is amongst you. How do I know that he's amongst you? Because you helping me fulfill this vision that he's given to us. Amen. Particularly where the academy, the school is concerned. He assigned us to give him a voice in the future. Amen. He said, teach my children how to hear my voice so they won't follow the voice of a stranger. Amen. Glory to God. So I want to appreciate all of you who have partnered with us in this endeavor, in this mission of giving God a voice in the future through the school, through the academy. This is our ninth year as a tuition-free school. Amen. We have five full-time faculty members at the school, and we want to lift up our faculty, appreciate those who dedicate their lives, amen, for the advancement of the kingdom of God. Amen. Listen, we're believing God for the Academy's budget to be met this month. It's $18,000. Amen. Glory to God. We're believing God that that budget is fully met for the month of September. Amen. Glory to God. And we know that you, amen, love the Lord. You love his works. Amen. You love the ministry, the people of God and the school. So I'm going to ask you to continue to sow and give into this endeavor. Amen. Glory to God. So we can rejoice and be exceedingly glad at what the Lord would do in and through you. Amen. We don't desire your gift. We desire fruit that it abound to your account. Amen. Like the apostle Paul said in Philippians chapter four, verse 15 through 19. Amen. He said, I don't desire your gift. He said, I desire fruit that it will abound to your account. And he said, now my God, will supply all of your need according to his riches and glory by Christ Jesus. Amen. So we're going to ask you to sow your best seed tonight. We want to believe God that this $18,000 budget is met this week in the name of Jesus Christ. We had a friend of the ministry today. I received news that he sold $1,000 into the ministry. Amen. Glory to God. I don't say his name because he'll, he'll get mad at me. He'll, he just like to keep it between him and the Lord. But he's a friend of the ministry and he sent $1,000 in, amen, for the school this week. And so we appreciate him and all of those who have committed, amen, and demonstrated their love to the Lord Amen. For these children, for our school. Now, the information is on your screen right there to give. There's so many ways to sow your seed, express your love. 
Amen. Go ahead and, and write that information down. You can go to the website, alccministries.org. Amen. And it'll inform you of how to give. Or you can just pay attention right there to your screen. Glory be to God. Now, God can only multiply the seed that is sown. Not the seed that you're going to sow, but the seed that you have sown. Amen. Glory to God. And we're going to pray according to 2 Corinthians 9. Amen. Verse 8 through 10 over your seed tonight, over your giving tonight, over your love tonight. Father, we thank you for those who are committed to express their love towards you and towards the ministry, toward the school, the family, the children, to give you a voice in the future, oh God. Oh, so that you will have access in the earth, oh God, and in the affairs of mankind. Oh, we thank you, Father God. In the name of Jesus Christ, for giving us seed to sow, bread for our food, for multiplying the seed that we're sowing and increasing us in the fruits of our righteousness. We thank you that no one participating in this offering will lack or need anything that you have provided and promised them in Christ. Every need is ministered to and met, exceedingly abundantly above all that they can ever ask or thank. In Jesus' name, we have prayed and given thanks. Amen. Praise God. Well, I'm so excited for the word tonight. We only have 15 minutes left, and we want to, amen, take advantage of the time that we got left to get into the word. So go get your Bibles, get your pen, a notepad, amen, so you can follow along through scriptures as we refer to the word. Amen. Glory to God. You can write these scripture references down and in days to come, you can go back over them. Amen. And feed and, and nurture, develop your faith, drive and starve out all your doubts because faith cometh by hearing and hearing by the word of God. Now, Jesus said in Luke chapter eight, verse 18, and in Mark chapter four, verse 24, he said, take heed how you hear and what you hear. Amen. Glory to God. Because how you hear and what you hear determine the degree of faith that's being ministered to you. Amen. So how do I hear? Amen. Well, the Bible tells us in James chapter 1, verse 21, receive with meekness the engrafted word which is able to save your soul. See, the word of God that you're hearing and receive it, it has Jesus engrafted in it. It has the life of God, the power of God, the spirit of God engrafted in it. Amen. What makes the word so powerful is because the word is creative. Amen. In the beginning was the word. The word was with God and the word was God. Nothing was made that was made without the word. What makes the word powerful is it's everlasting. Amen. First Peter 1 verse 23, being born again, not of corruptible seed, but incorruptible by the word of God, which liveth and abideth forever. What makes the word powerful is because, amen, it's prophetic. Amen. Jesus said, amen, in Mark chapter 13, 31, heaven and earth will pass away, but my word will remain forever. He watches over his word to perform it. Amen. It's creative. Amen. It's prophetic and it's everlasting. Amen. And he said, take heed how you hear. How do you hear correctly, accurately? You hear with meekness. What does that mean? You hear the word. You hear what Jesus say. You receive what Jesus say without protest, argument, and without wishing it was different. Amen. It's, you got to have a, of the right attitude. Amen about hearing the word. You got to hear it, amen, without protest, without argument, and without wishing it was different. You got to accept Jesus' treatment of your case. Amen. Glory to God. Woo! When he said, love your enemy, you got to hear it without protest, argument, and without wishing it was different. When he said, give, and it shall be given unto you, you got to give without protest, argument, and without wishing it was different. You can't give reluctantly, 
Amen. Are uh, sorrowfully, are uh, grudgingly. No, you got to give cheerfully without protest, argument, and without wishing it was different. When he said pray, you got to pray without protest, argument, without wishing it was different. When he said don't forsake the assembly of the saints as the manner of some is, you got to come and, uh, and, and attend church service without protest, argument, without wishing it was different. Amen. That difference, amen, one believer from another, they can hear the same word, but one is hearing it with protest argument. One is hearing it with wishing it was different, and the other one is receiving it as though it's the best way, the only way, can't be another way. There's no protest argument. There's no wishing it was different in their hearing and receiving. Woo! The word of God has a home, a resting place in their heart. Oh, glory to God. Amen. The Lord spoke something to me. He said, son, he said, how you hear the word determines the ground that the seed, the word go into. Mm. He pointed me to the parable of the sower in Matthew 13. He said, there's four types of ground, four degrees of hearts. Amen. Notice he said, there's a wayside. He said, there was stony. Amen. And then there were thorny ground and then good ground. Amen. A good ground is a heart that receives the word without protest argument and without wishing it was different. Amen. See, until you hear the word, amen, as though it's the only way, the best way, can't be another way, then you're going to come up with another way. You still stuck on your opinions. And what others, what you think, what you know, what you believe. And I'm telling you, this is determining the effects of the word, the manifestations of the word. Amen. It's how you hear the word. Amen. I wasn't even going to go in this tonight. But I'm going to go in this way tonight because the Lord wants to save, deliver, and to set his people free. But he can only do it through the word. Amen. And it's how you receive this word that would determine the effects and manifestations in your life. Woo, glory to God. Amen. Now watch this right here. I want you to hear this. Amen. Go here with me. Amen to Acts chapter. Woo, boy, I heard the Holy Ghost now. Woo. Wow. This is what he said. He said the value that you place on his word would determine the degree of manifestations in your life. Mm. Glory to God. Woo! Man, the value you place on the word would determine its effects in your life. Mm. Glory to God. Notice what David said. And, and woo! Man, look there in Psalms 119. 119. Look at David's attitude. You know, he was the only king that never lost a battle. Man, he said, many are the afflictions of the righteous, but the Lord delivered me out of them all. Amen. What? Why was God so committed to David to deliver him out of all his trouble? Amen. I want to know. Here's his secret right here in Psalms 119. Look at verse 7. He said in Psalms 119, verse, verse, uh, well, let's pick it up in verse 9. Wherewithal shall a young man cleanse his way? By taking heed according to the word. Wow. Look at verse 11. Your word have I hid in my heart that I should not sin against thee. Amen. See, David is describing, amen, and, and, and conditioning, amen, his involvement with God, the manifestations of the, of the Lord in his life to the word. He's ascribing it all to the word. Whether or not he's delivered from sin has to do with his engagement in the word. Whether or not his ways are clean has to do with his engagement in the word. Amen. Woo, glory. 
Amen. Go there to verse 97. Notice what he said. Oh, how I love your word. It is my meditation all the day. Through your commandments, I have become wiser than my enemies, for they are ever with me. I have more understanding than all my teachers, for your word are my meditation. I understand all than the ancients, because I keep your precepts. Look at verse 101. Woo! I have refrained my feet from all evil. Why did you do that? That I may keep your word. Mm. See, many of people want David's testimonies, results, and effects, and outcome, but they don't want his dedication, his commitment to the word. Mm. Are you seeing this today? Look at Psalms 119. Look at verse 165. He said, great peace have they who love your word and don't nothing offend them. David didn't let Saul offend him. He didn't let the Philistines offend him. He didn't let, amen, glory to God, uh, his son Absalom offend him. Amen. He didn't let, amen, the leaders that, 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 that spake a stone in him. He, he didn't even let them offend him. Why? Because his love for the word restrained him. Mm. Glory to God. It kept him in Christ. Woo, it kept him in victory. Amen. So it's how you hear this word. Amen. Are you hearing it without protest? Are you hearing it without argument? Are you hearing it without wishing it was different? Remember the rich young ruler in Luke 18, verse 18 through 23? You remember? Amen. He came to Jesus. Desiring something. What was he desiring? Eternal life. And Jesus told him what to do. Keep the word. He said, I done kept it from my youth up. Jesus said, you like one thing. What is that? Go sell all you have. Give it to the poor. See, Jesus wasn't trying to de deplete his resources. He was trying to remove from him what would keep him from following him. Anything Jesus see having more, having you more than him, he's going to require you to sacrifice it because he don't want nothing having you but him. Mm. Glory to God. Amen. See, I, 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 I was, <laughs> and, and I'm going to share this testimony with you because in John chapter 12, I think it's around in verse, uh, what is it? Verse 30, verse 38, John 12 Verse 38, amen. John 12, verse 30, uh, 30, well, no, 40, 41, 42 and 43. He said, nevertheless, among the chief priests of Eden, many believed on him, but because of the Pharisees, they did not confess him, lest they should be put out of the synagogue, for they loved the praises of man more than the praises of God. And I remember one time I was in a church service and the minister was ministering on the very thing, amen, that I needed to repent of, amen. And the Lord showed it to me, you need to repent of this, amen. And so and uh, so, uh, I had been, I had a lot, entered into a conversation about another minister and they was, they was bashing him, tearing him up and uh and I just, they said, man, what, Pastor Mike, what do you think? I said, boy, that's crazy that he did that. And I didn't think no more about it until that, that service and the Lord drew my attention to it. Woo! Amen. And the minister was, was in, the, in the service with us that we were talking about. And the Lord said, the Lord said, uh, uh, you know, we were going to do the offering, you know, and in Mark, Matthew chapter 5, it says, when you bring your gift to the altar and there remember that your brother have ought against you, he said, go settle that, then come back and offer your gift. And I said, Lord, why are you showing me that? He said, because that's the only way I'm going to receive your offering. So I did, I, you know, I knew the Lord was requiring me to go settle that with that brother and then offer my gift and he would receive it. But I tried to go offer it. Amen. And, and, and then afterwards, I was going to go settle it. 
And the Lord said, no, that's not the order of God. That's your order. The order is before you bring it, when you bring it to the altar, go settle it, then come back and offer it. And I asked the Lord, Lord, why you want me to do this in front of everybody? And this is what he said. He said, because you cannot love the praises of man, what people opinion about more than the praises of God. I want to break that off for you. Ooh, so that's why the Lord required people to come to the altar. Amen. Because it's, it's breaking off of them, their love, their concern for what people think. Ooh, glory to God. So I went over there and told that brother, I apologize. He said, for what? I said, the other day I entered into a conversation with some other members about something you did. Man, I'm so sorry. Forgive me. He said, no problem. I forgive you, Pastor Mike. I went down and offered my gift to the Lord. Who came back rejoicing because the Lord accepted it. Amen. See, I received what Jesus said without protest, without argument, and without wishing it was different. Woo! Glory to God. And the word found a place in my heart. I believe that's why I have a tender heart before the Lord. It's because I care more what he think, what he see, what he know. Amen. Glory to God. And I believe that right now, tonight, if you, amen, glory to God, will love the praises of God, what Jesus think, what he see and know, more than the praises of man, what they see and know, Jesus woo, will blot out all your sins, amen, he'll throw them in the sea of forgiveness to remember them no more. And he'll restore to you that which your sin has forfeited and, and lost. And, 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 and he'll redeem it and restore it and put it back into your tomorrow. Just pray this prayer with me. Father God, today I repent for caring more of what others think of me, know about me, than what you think, see, and know. I receive deliverance from this deception. And now I come up under the influence of your word. I care more about what you know, what you see, what you hear, more than what others hear, see, and know. And I ask you to forgive me. Wash me in the blood of Jesus. Purge me and bring me into the light. The light of your spirit, the light of your power, the light of your anointing, and deliver me and set me free. I receive freedom today from every oppression of the devil. Now restore to me that which was forfeited and lost. Put it back into my tomorrow. Woo! Put it back into my future. I receive it now in Jesus' name. Amen. Oh, what a powerful word. Glory to God. Praise the Lord. Amen. I want to appreciate all of you for tuning in tonight. Take this word and share it with others. Amen. Give them, amen, a word that will have them to have an encounter with the Lord. Amen. Glory to God. This Thursday, Oh, I'm telling you, at midweek service, you don't want to miss it. It's going to be powerful, you all. Amen. Glory to God. Keep us in prayer. We love you so much. It's always our prayer to our Heavenly Father on your behalf that God's richest and best be yours.